prophesy that our hearts will cry more how great how great is our God on the earth Father, we love you in this sacred place this morning. We acknowledge your headship in this house. God, we thank you for the privilege you've given us to join together one more time with people of like precious faith and exalt the mighty name of Jesus. We declare with the great apostle Paul that while you did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, you made of yourself no reputation and you humbled yourself and became obedient unto death, even the death of a cross. Wherefore God hath also highly exalted you and given you a name that's above every other name that at the name of Jesus, somebody shout Jesus, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, every tongue confess of things on heaven, of things on earth, and of things under the earth that Jesus Christ he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. If you believe that, why don't you clap your hands and shout amen in this sacred place. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm already glad I came to church. Turn around and shake two or three people's hand and tell them you're glad to see them in the house of Almighty God this morning before you're seated. Amen, amen, and amen. Is it any wonder the scripture says better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere? Is it any wonder the scripture said I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord. The psalmist David said in the 27th Psalm uh, that, that one thing have I desired of the Lord that I may dwell in his house all the days of my life to see the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me up upon a rock so i am so glad that you've come to god's house this morning it's our prayer that someone has already shaken your hand and told you that this place is a better place with you here listen god has put us all together and we're part of the family and when you're not with us it makes a difference we feel your presence when it's here and we notice your absence when you're gone and we are so glad that you're in the house of the lord this morning and we pray that god's richest blessings would just rest upon your life in a wonderful way good to have a tremendous crowd uh, this morning we've got a host of people that i've already uh, been with today over at lee campus uh, that are getting ready uh, for a great, great wedding that we're going to have this afternoon. And they send their love to you and just keep them in prayer that God would give uh, the Lamberts and the Holloways a fantastic day today uh, as they come together in holy matrimony. If you're here this morning and it's your first time to visit with us, we're so glad that you've come here. I believe you've come to the greatest church in the area. If you believe that, clap your hands and shout amen. You're, you're sitting around the greatest people that Cleveland, Tennessee has to offer. If it's your first time to visit with us, we'd like to put a contact card in your hand along with a gift. We'd like to treat you uh, to Starbucks this week and just let you know that we appreciate your attendance. So if you're a first time visitor, if you'd slip your hand up very quickly, our ushers will come to you. Do we have any first time 
visitors in the house of the Lord with us this morning. Beautiful lady there in the middle. Give her a hand. Tell her you're glad to have them with us today. Amen. Any other visitors, the ushers will come to you. We are thrilled to have you. And if you're not actively attending a church that's ministering to your needs, we encourage you to come and worship here with us. It's a fantastic place to be. On Sunday mornings, you'll be led in inspirational worship by the psalmist of this house. Uh, I promise you there will be anointed preaching that will come to your life from this sacred desk. On Wednesday night, there are a host of different places for you to get connected and get involved. And let me encourage you to come be in the sanctuary this Wednesday night about uh, two or three months ago, or, 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 or maybe a, a month and a half ago, uh, we had a tag team preaching night where we had three of our young preachers uh, come and preach, and they did a tremendous job, and I was just overrun uh, with comments by people telling me how much they enjoyed that. We've got a couple of other things scheduled uh, coming up this coming Wednesday night. Uh, I've got three of the preachers uh, of this house that have just been recent, two of them just been recently credentialed, one of them credentialed for a while that will be coming and preaching a tag team message this Wednesday night. You want to come be a part of it. They'll be picking up a message, that, a series of messages that I preached when I first uh, arrived as your pastor, and they'll be preaching to you on three points Wednesday night about the fact that prayer changes things. It changes people, it changes circumstances, and it changes perspective. And you want to come and you want to be a part of that. It's going to be a fantastic uh, service that you don't want to miss. And then about three weeks beyond that, we're going to some of the old timers uh, of the house. And I've got three of our silver-headed preachers uh, that are going to minister to you in a tag team service on Wednesday night. So we encourage you to connect with that and be a part of it. You're about to be ministered to by the greatest choir in all of Tennessee. Worship the Lord with the South Cleveland Choir as they come to minister this morning. Lord, you said in Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. You told your disciples if two or three agree is touching any one thing, it shall be given of our Father. We call upon you today, Lord. Hear us as we pray, as we cry out to you, as we call unto you today. Hear us, Lord, we ask. Uh, our hearts are broken. Our fights to destroy us. Make us warriors. Make us brave to fight. We are hurting and desperate for you. God, you are our only hope. We cry out to you. Only you, Lord, can change things. But we have to pray. Oh God of heaven, Lord, help us to remember no matter the trial, no matter the tribulation, no matter how hard times are, Lord, to fall on our knees and to bring all of our needs, all of our hurts to you, into your throne room. And Lord, our prayer today for this church, for this county, for this state, for this country, Lord, is for a mighty outpouring, a sweeping over of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that this nation might fall on its knees and come back to you. Lord, just bring us as a nation back to prayer. And it's in Jesus' name. Yes. 
Well, somebody ought to shout amen. I believe he will answer when you pray one of the key verses of the Old Testament, one of the most quoted verses uh, in the Bible says, when my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and do what? Pray and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. And I'm going to tell you, if there's ever been a day that our land has needed prayer, it's now. Can you shout amen? amen. If there's ever been a day that our land has needed prayer, it's, it, it, it's, as a matter of fact, just stand to your feet with me all over this building. We're going to pray for my hometown of Dallas today and ask God to be gracious to them all over this building as if I handed you this microphone and asked you to lead this prayer. Every person in this building, would you slip your hands to heaven right now and begin to pray that God would give our nation grace? Come on. Come on. Somebody pray. Come on. Somebody get a hold of God. It doesn't matter if it happens in the choir or in the balcony, or in the back row, or on the front row. Somebody get a hold of God right now. Father, we, we're going to respond to this choir song, and we're going to pray. God, I'm asking you for great grace. God, I'm asking you for mercy. God, I'm asking you for your forgiveness to sweep over this country and heal this divide, God. Father, I pray that you would make us one. God, I pray that you would send the anointing of the Holy Ghost of Heaven and that you would make us one, God. I pray that you would heal every hurt. I pray for, for, for those who have been killed in Dallas, Texas this week. And God, I ask you to minister to those families. God, I ask you to touch that police department. God, I ask you to touch that city. And God, I pray for our first responders all around this country, God, that you would surround them, God, that you would be gracious to them, that you would give them peace, God. And I ask for your divine help to be around this country at every turn. May your presence be ever evident with us and we'll be careful to give you thanks, praise, glory, and honor in the wonderful, mighty name of Jesus. And God, for the officers that, that worship here at South Cleveland that help protect us and keep us safe, God, I pray a, a special prayer of blessing and protection would be with them in a supernatural way in Christ's precious, wonderful name. And all of God's people said, Amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord, and I thank you for your prayers. Listen, I'm so glad that you're a part of this church, and I just continue to meet new families all the time. I walked out of my house uh, on the 4th of July and walked across the street uh, into the field next to me where a group of my neighbors had gathered together, and, and they were popping fireworks, and I sat down with the Castiles and, and was just talking, and I didn't realize that the family that was sitting by them worship her on a regular basis and I met them is the Steele family in that balcony today he, they told me they were balcony people and they're waving at me from the balcony I'm glad to meet you listen if, if you're here and you haven't had a chance to sit down with me one-on-one -on -one, please shake my hand let me uh, know your name I'm glad to meet you I'm glad to be your pastor and looking forward to being your friend and, and I'm very privileged and honored that you give us the audience uh, to speak into your life and the platform to minister to you every single week and we never take that for granted and it's my prayer that we're effective in everything that we do for the kingdom thank you for the way you're giving around here the giving has been tremendous God is blessing us we don't have any sad songs to sing as a matter of fact uh, uh, with the offering last week and then the combined online giving for the week I believe we had the strongest financial week since I've been here you ought to give the Lord a hand of praise and thank God for that so we thank you we thank you for the way that you're giving. I, I, I walked in today, and, and Brother Hal and Brother Arden caught me at the back door and told me they were having problems uh, with online giving. I think they got them fixed up this morning. The church had a wrong email for them. If you, if you have been trying to give online and it's kicking you out, uh, just call the office. Make sure that we have the correct email for you. And next Sunday morning, my bride will be set up in the foyer uh, with a computer helping you give. And now listen, if all else fails, if you try credit cards, if you try debit cards, if you try automatic drafts and you can't get it work, if all else fails, other people may not do this anymore, but here at the South Cleveland Church of God, we still take cold, hard cash. Somebody shout amen. So, I mean, you can, you can do it. 
you can do it the old-fashioned way if you have to and put it in the offering plate when it comes by, and we'll take it any way we can get it. And the people said, amen. Thank you so much for the way you're giving uh, on a weekly basis. You continue to give, and we'll continue to spread the gospel to the four corners of the earth, and in so doing, speed the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ushers, would you come quickly as we get ready to worship when I finish uh, praying over this offering. There'll be video announcements following those announcements. Josh will lead us uh, in one more course of worship. And then the next voice you hear uh, will be a voice that needs no introduction here at the South Cleveland Church of God. He pastored this church for 13 years, led you through the greatest transition uh, that the South Cleveland Church of God has had in its 100-year history when he, made, when he moved you from your past location into this location. I, I left early this morning and drove to Lee University to run through uh, the wedding with uh, the, the wedding party this morning, and I was driving down, uh, is it Broad Street where the old church is? Is that the name of the street? Mm -hmm. I was driving down Broad Street, and I passed that building. Uh, everybody's correcting me. Okoy. I, I, I was driving down Okoy, and I passed the old South Cleveland building. I preached in that building uh, on many occasions and know that y'all had fantastic services there for so many years. But I looked at that building, and I just shook my head. If, if you think that Pastor Moody doesn't have more than talent, I, I, I know he's a great preacher. I know he's an okay singer. I, I know that, that he is a very gifted and talented man. But if you think there's not more than talent to his life, when, when you look at that building and realize that you sold it for a million dollars, now, now let me tell you what that building's worth. That building's worth $300,000. It's old. It's, it's on multiple levels. It's, it's not very usable for very many things. And, and the fact that you sold that building when you got ready to move to this complex for $1 million dollars is a testament to the favor of God that rested on his life, and this church is forever indebted to his 13 years of ministry. Would you let him know you're glad to have him at the South Cleveland Church of God this morning? Bless you, Bishop Moody. We honor you. We appreciate you. Father, I love you today. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for these beautiful saints that have come to worship. I thank you for the gifts they've brought in their hand. And even though Matt Howe couldn't get the computer to work, he's going to reach deep down in his pockets and he's going to find that cash that Sister Howe doesn't know he has. And he's going to put it in the offering plate when it comes by and he's going to honor you with this tithe and offering. God, and I thank you for every family in this church that is so faithful in their gifts. God, I thank you that we're going to continue to set financial records, that we're going to move to a point of being debt-free, God, where our money is released from ministry literally around this globe. I thank you for Bishop Chris Moody for his investment in this church and the word that he's going to bring today. I pray that you'd anoint him, that his words would be your words and that they would be quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. And all of God's people said, Worship the Lord in your giving this morning. On Tuesday, August 2nd, there will be a church-wide outreach, the Blythe Bauer Back to School Celebration. It will take place at Blythe Bauer Elementary School from 5 to 7 p.m. We're in need of the following supplies. Clorox wipes, tissue, hand sanitizer, glue sticks, crayons, notebook paper, spiral notebooks, and pencils. Thank you for your help. Celebrate Recovery. Thursday, July 21st, Celebrate Recovery will be having their one-year celebration during their regular scheduled service. This will be a great time of celebration as we look back on all God has done in our first year of ministry while we anticipate and thank Him for all He is going to do this year. Arise Women, Globe Group will be meeting Saturday at 9.30 in Roberts Hall to assemble hygiene packets for women in need. We look forward to seeing you there. Fusion Students, this week's summer theme, Glow Night. Come dressed in your bright colors, ready to have fun, worship, and hear the word. Jocelyn McGuire will be bringing us the word. Our night starts at 7 p.m. For more information about Fusion Youth, contact Pastor Josh Lane at josh at southcleveland.org. Children's Ministry Organization Meeting. 
If you are interested in joining our volunteer team or if you are currently helping us, there will be an information meeting tonight at 6 p.m. in room 121. For more information, see Pastor Scott or Kelly. Distinct, how to act like community. This week, we will take a look at how the book of Acts models the way a community should act and look as we strive to be the group God has commissioned us to be. Join us at 6.30 p.m. for prayer and 7 p.m. for service. Texas yesterday, and it's good to be home in Tennessee. Amen. It's good to be home. Amen. I, I join Pastor Lipsy in the celebration of what the Lord is doing here. It's an honor uh, to come back. Not many preachers are real keen on letting the former pastor come back every once in a while. I was not going to preach. I tried to talk him out of me preaching, and he would not have it. Uh, and uh, I appreciate him so very much. Uh, some things never change. Brother Curtis is a for instance. Some things never change. I'm thankful for my heritage at South Cleveland. I'm thankful for men like Brother Curtis. As I look around this room today, there's a couple of people that I miss dearly today. The Silvers, Brother J.D. and Sister Alain. Miss them today. I know that they would love to be here. Some things never change. I begged Brother Lipsy last week to do something for me. And he wouldn't have it. Debbie Huttenhoff is no longer 40. She is no longer 50. 
She is 60. Hallelujah. She turned 60 years old last week. Some things never change. I'm still going to pick on Debbie Huttenhoff until Jesus comes. She can color her hair black as she wants to color it. She has turned 60. Dennis Carson is from the banners of heaven today. Dennis Carson is looking down here, and Jerry Arp is looking down here saying, go ahead, get her, get her, get her. They are doing that with me today. Debbie, happy 60th birthday last week. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Lipsy's knotted up over here pretty strong right now. Hallelujah. I want you to know, I want you to know that I love you, Debbie, and appreciate you and Brad. Uh, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Got me a heckler in the crowd now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are standing on holy ground. God feel him. And I know there are angels all around. Let us pray. what this world has done this week. I don't care how difficult it has been. And it, it's hard to watch. It's hard to stomach. It's hard to watch people fan flames that are believers that we ought not be fanning. It's hard for me to watch. The most beautiful picture I saw this week was on social media, on Instagram, was a man's hand. It had a red mark here, a black mark here, and a white mark, and a yellow mark here. And it said, Jesus loves the little children. Red, yellow, black, and white. All lives matter to him. And I'm telling you, our country needs a move of God. When will this sleeping giant called the church arise from its sleep? And when will we awaken to the conquering Christians that God has called us to be? In the midst of a thing that never changes, there is one called Jesus that we can move into his presence and all things become new. I want to sing that chorus one more time. I want you to sing it with me. I know it's an old school song and I felt like y'all were probably starving to death for a preacher to sing to you. So I'm going to sing it one more time. I want you to go into his presence today. Regardless of what demographic background you're from, regardless of what social class you're from, you can move into his presence today because we're standing on holy ground. We are standing Hold oh, oh. There is joy 
beyond all measure. And at his feet, true peace of mind, it can still be found. If you have a need, I know. different churches 314 days the Lord is doing some great things here in Cleveland the reason I know God was in this transition is because of how he has blessed here and how he has blessed us where we are we raised <clears throat> this year since February the 1st we've raised $259,000 for home missions in the state of Mississippi. We planted two churches and relaunched two churches. We have remodeled 14 small churches with the $250,000 that God has helped us raise. To God be the glory for what he's doing at South Cleveland. And your seed that you invested in me for 13 years is in Mississippi and that is your harvest. And I thank you for blessing us. We love you, Pastor Lipsy. We love Sister Don. We love your family. We thank God for what he is doing. And greater, greater things are going to happen. Greater things are going. This place is going to be debt free in a few days. Somebody said, how do you know? I just know. I sense it in the spirit. I sense God doing something great here. I sense God moving mightily here summertime and you've got a pretty big crowd I'm, I'm telling you God's about to do something here the Holy Ghost spoke to me this, this morning on the way to church preaching a sermon that the last part of it I preached a series here but the Lord gave me a phrase in the middle of morning this morning and that phrase is our nation and our church needs conquering Christians in a 
country in crises. Conquering Christians in a country in crises. Nay, in all of these things, verse 37 said. Nay, in all of these things. Nay, in all of these things. Nay, in all of these things. We are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. I'm persuaded this morning that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is found in Christ Jesus our Lord. I've come by to tell Obama, Chelsea's mama, and Trump's drama, ain't nothing gonna separate us from the love of God which is found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on somebody. Ain't nothing going to separate us from the love of God which is found in Christ Jesus our Lord. You can be seated in His presence. It's good to see Brother Lindsey Evans preached a revival in his sister's church a few days ago and he's there every night. said he is starving to death for good preaching. Conquering Christians in a country in crises. We're in a crisis. I knew I was on target when Brother Lipsy took the mic, when the choir sang the song. This is real simple today, but real profound. If we're going to be a conquering Christian in a country in crises, We're going to have to pray. We're going to have to pray. That sounds sounds real easy. Well, then why aren't you doing it? We're going to have to pray. Before we type, we ought to pray. Before we hit send, we ought to pray. Before we open our Mouth, we ought to pray. Now's not a time to be damning God, and it's not a time for us to be calling one another names. Now, it's, this is not a playground bully situation that we have in this world today. It's a country that is in crises that is looking for an answer. And I wish to God we had a leader somewhere that would point them to an old rugged cross that will still make the difference. Prayer still changes things. Prevailing in prayer. The word prevail means to triumph. The word prevail means to persist. The word prevail means to become effective. The word prevail means to hold on. The word prevail means to Carry on. Boy, I could preach a whole lot right there. But, but there are so many people who, who are not holding on, who are not carrying on, who are, who are not becoming persistent. It, we, we must be persistent. The one gift that God gave me and that guy sitting on the front row is the gift of persistence. I knew Terry Moody was my wife the moment I saw her on the corner of Pearl and Nash at that little church in Van Alstine, Texas. And I said to myself, that is going to be my bride one day. We were in the eighth grade. She ran from me for for six years. She, She ran from me. And then when I caught up to her after six years, she ran some more. Hallelujah. But listen to me. We we've got to get persistent. In, 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 in what we do and, and how we do it. We, we, we have no problem being persistent when our food is not right. We say, can, can you take that back to the kitchen and cook it a little longer? It's called persistence. We have no problem if you were like me and you were delayed three hours in getting here and you get here at midnight instead of 9 o'clock last night and, 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 and I went to the counter and I said, you've got to get me 
on a flight. I can't, I cannot stay here. I've turned my rental car in. My wife is two hours away. This is the only flight to Chattanooga, they said. I said, I don't really care if it's the only flight to Chattanooga. Fly me to Birmingham. Fly me to Atlanta. Just get me somewhere close and I can drive. They said, we think it's going to make it. I said, well, let me ask you a question. Do you have any seats in first class? They just looked at me and said, who are you? I said, well, I'm Charles Christopher Moody. Are you a platinum? I said, well, that depends on who you ask. Hallelujah. I said, but, 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 but no, I don't think I'm platinum. And, and, and she said, well, let me see what I can do. It didn't, it didn't sit well with me. So I went back about five minutes later. I said, did you find anything out? She said, hang on a minute. I'm checking on it. I went back and I sat down. She still didn't find anything. I, I knew that on that flight there were these apple chips that I like in the first class section that you can get. And I knew that if I could just be persistent long enough, some dude already told me there were eight seats in first class. And if you've ever flown that pedal jumper from uh, Chattanooga to Dallas, you understand what I'm talking about. And I thought there was no first class, but this was a brand new plane. And I said, is there any seats for the third time? She said, Mr. Moody, I am fixing it right now. And that's how she said it back to me. But you understand, it was persistence that got me to the place that I wanted to get to. You hear me, church. We are too stinking lazy in our prayer life that we have no persistence to prevail in prayer. We, 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 we have no consistency when it comes to praying. Oh, yeah, we'll complain and we'll be persistent in our complaints to the city council. Or we'll be consistent in our petitions to the, to the court. Or we'll be consistent in our petitions to our school superintendent or, or you, you understand what I'm saying but when it comes to petitioning God it seems that we get bored and we just hit the snooze button and we simply do not know how to prevail in prayer anymore I wish to God we'd get some of them old timers again that would lay hands on you and you wasn't leaving until God had breakthrough in your life when I was a boy and I, I learned this lesson as a boy Clay was mean as a junkyard dog as a kid he hated church he would tell you I hate church I don't want to go to church I don't that's why he's late every week hallelujah and 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 and, and so and so Clay was one of these guys that 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 would throw a what I mean he would huck and buck and it wasn't in the Holy Ghost it was in the flesh he would say I'm not going I don't want to get out of I remember daddy whipping him every Sunday morning and I'd just laugh. Hallelujah. I, I remember daddy whipping him and saying you're going son you're going I remember Granny Frazier said Brother, Brother Charlie, I believe he just needs the devil cast out of him. I said, I've been saying that a long time. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, I'm, 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 I'm telling you that my daddy and my mama are praying people. And if you told daddy you were sick, it was a good reason for you to go to church, not to stay home. Daddy would say, if we can get you to church, they'll lay hands on you. And if I can't touch God, somebody there will surely touch him for me. Hallelujah. I thought to myself, and the thing about these saints praying is, when they pray for you and they say, do you feel better? You better say yes. Because if you don't, he'll say, let me pray again. And he gets rougher with those hands and more vibrant with those tongues. Are you understand what I'm saying? We, we as the church today, are in a, we're in a lethargic position. We're in this apathetic position. And we're in this poor, pitiful me position. And we're thinking we're victim when all along God says, you've got the remedy. It's called love. It's called prayer. It's called seeking the face of God Almighty. When you do a study on the altar, Oh, help me, Jesus. You, 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 I can still remember a preacher saying to me, an old timer saying to me, and it didn't register with me until I did a study on this, you need to grab a hold of the horns of the altar. Oh, my God, my God. The horns is the place of sacrifice. It's the place they would hold on to and call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, God, help us again to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, our hope today, our only hope today is in Jesus Christ. The, the only hope that we have as a church or as believers is in the name of the Lord. Prayer still produces miracles. When you get in older places in the rural area, which is, a lot of Mississippi is rural. And I'm telling you, 
My GPS can't even find some of these places. If you've ever been, Brother Jeffords can tell you, he's been an overseer. The Church of God was strategic in placing churches where people weren't. We, we were strategic in placing churches where you had to know where you were going before you ever got to where you were going. And if you didn't know, if you'd never been there, it was very difficult. And there's nothing more frustrating than to be in your GPS or on your phone and you're trying to get to an appointment and, the, and it says, you have arrived at your destination. Oh, yeah? Where in the world is it then? Hallelujah. I, 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 there's nothing more frustrating than that. And, 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 and when I think about, when I think about, the church, when I, when, I, when I started traveling on these roads all across Mississippi, in the rural areas there are these power lines. There are these, still these big poles. They're, they're not buried underground. In fact, any of you that are old-timers know what I'm talking about. Some of you, even here in Cleveland and some of our older communities, have power lines in your front yard. But when you get in your car and you start driving, and that, I, I, I got bored one day and I tried not to fall asleep. I'm counting the power lines. One, two, three. I used to count them slower than that, but one, two. But at the end of the day, I got to thinking about prayer. Prayer, prayer, those, those lines are running somewhere. Those power lines are going somewhere. I, I, I didn't have time to track down the power lines. I didn't have time to, to, to go navigate my way and see where that power line, but, but all I could see is it connected one pole to the next pole to the next pole to the next pole to the next pole, to the next pole, until finally you get to the source where the power is. And I'm going to tell you right now, prayer is the power line that gets you to the source of where God is. I'm telling you, there's the poles represent the Baptist, the Methodist, the Presbyterian, the Catholic, anybody that calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the prayers that we pray get a hold of that power line and they go all the way to heaven who where God, where Jesus sits down at the right hand of the Father and he evermore makes intercession for us. I'm telling you, what would happen if the church would pray again? Forget about revival. We would have, I'm telling you, we'd have Pentecostal pandemonium if the church would just pray again again. If the church would just get on their knees and seek the face of God more than they get on their Twitter and they get on their Tweety and they get on their Facebook and they get on their Instagram. I, I don't know how some people get things done. Listen, we had better pray. Prayer still changes things. And here's what we say when somebody says I'm sick. We'll say, I'm going to pray for you. Oh, help me, Jesus. If you don't pray then and you don't write it down, chances are you're not going to pray. Huh? The Holy Spirit started convicting me of that. So every time somebody would tell me that, I would start putting it in my notes page of my phone and I've made it a list now and I'll pray for them. If you're not going to pray, don't lie to them. We must return to a season of prayer I'm talking about lamentations in prayer. I'm talking about lamenting in prayer. I'm talking about praying in the Holy Ghost praying. When's the last time, you folks, that we claim to be spirit-filled, when's the last time you were grieved in the Holy Spirit and you groaned in the Spirit and you allowed God to pray through you in the Spirit? Oh, God, breathe again on the church that we would pray. Listen, I... I, I I, I, I believe with all of my heart that the second thing is the it's easier than praying. It's easier than praying. We just need to read the Bible. <laughs> I have friends that try to make this say what they ever want it to say, but it still says what it says. You can't change what it says about sin. You can't change what it says about fornication, about adultery, about gossip. Help me, Holy Ghost. You can't change what it says about cheating and lying. You can't, you can't change what it says about heaven and hell. You can't change what it says about the cross and the crucifixion and the resurrection and the ascension and the soon return of Jesus Christ. It's all here. It's all here. And, and the church, 
rather than reaching and cultivating the harvest, is splitting hairs over this book. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the Holy Ghost baptizer. Jesus is the soon coming king. And we must get back to this book. Whatsoever, Paul said, whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for my learning and for my instruction, that we through the scripture and through comfort of the scriptures might have hope. We've got to read the word of God with intention. You've got to make your mind up that I'm going to read the word. The word. You could quote these scriptures. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a the word that I have hid in my why? How are you going to hide something in your heart if you don't know what it says? The reason people are doing what they are doing is there's no word in them. The reason the church acts the way they do in times of tragedy is because there's no word on them. So they just spit from their mouth and it becomes more damaged than it is good. The Word has got to get shut up in our bones again. The Word has to be a fire again into our lives again. The Word has to be a part of our lifestyle every single day of our life. This is easy. This is easy. So why aren't we doing it? The Spirit convicts me about this. Maybe He doesn't with you. But He convicts me and says, you need to do more reading of the Word than just trying to prepare a sermon. So I'm preaching to Chris now. Don't think I'm just picking on you. I'm talking to Chris today. What's wrong with us preachers? This is the map to get us where we're going. This is the, this is the atlas that I can open up and find that there is a path for me to follow. Y'all know how I'm intrigued with the alphabet. I was on the plane last night. Begin to rehearse this. I've got a straight pin in my tab collar because it don't work. That poking me. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. The Word of God and prayer are the remedy to the church. Huh. You show me a church that's in the Word and in prayer, and they won't be in somebody's dumpster trying to find out what they're doing last night. Hello. All things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose in Christ Jesus. B, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He heals all my diseases. He forgives all my iniquities. He redeems me from destruction. He crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies, and he satisfies my mouth with good things. C, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. D, delight thyself in the presence of the Lord, and he will give thee the desires of thy heart. E, exalt the Lord with me. Come, let us exalt his name together. F, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, and put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in this evil day. And having done everything you can do, stand. We're against the wiles of the devil. E-E-E-F-G, give, and it shall be given unto you. Shake down, pressing together, and run over. Listen, this boy next, next Sunday, your preacher's going to get up and tell what his boy saw today. He, he was bragging on me about being a good preacher, so I'm going to go ahead and tell it now. Bragging on me being a good preacher and bragging on me being a good singer. He said he's a terrible giver. He only gave $8 today. Hallelujah. He counted the money. He's a lipsy. Hallelujah. He counted the money that I gave an offering. I said I gave all kinds of money last week to Mississippi. I don't believe that. He said, hallelujah. He's a true Edwin Lipsy. Hallelujah. So before he gets his thunder, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, H, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will endure forever. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, then will I heal their land, and then will I forgive their sins. He, he, a, 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 H, I, J, judge not lest you be judged. K, keep your mouth from speaking any guile against your neighbor. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in, I'm talking about the word of God. This is the word of God from A to Z. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me and my Father's house or many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I'm coming again. And I'm going to receive you unto myself that where I am there, you may be also. Where am I? L-M. M. Magnify the Lord with me. 
hey, hey, in now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. By it the elders obtained a good report. Don't have time to go there. In oh, oh, that the people of God would praise him for his mercy endures forever. P, purge me with your hyssop. Wash me as white as snow. Q, quench not the spirit. Do not despise prophesying. In everything that you do, give thanks unto the Lord. Q, R, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let not your moderation be made known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in all things in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God and the very peace of God that passes all understanding will be with you to comfort you, your heart and your mind. In Christ Jesus our Lord, S, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of his pasture. Enter in his gates with thanksgiving. Enter in his courts with praise. Be careful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth through all generations. T, thanks be unto God who giveth me the victory through our Lord and Savior your Jesus Christ. You use hospitality one to another and pray ye one for another. V, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. W, they shall call his name wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace, and the increase of his government, there shall be no end. W-X, well, that's a good one. How excellent is the name of the Lord our God. Why, you have not chosen me, Moody. I chose you. I called you. Z, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Boy, I wish to God we'd get some church people eat up with the house of God rather than people and problems, and cancer, and diabetes. When's the last time you got eat up with the house of God? I wish I had to have somebody a chemo treatment because they has eat up with the house of God. Oh God, help us get eat up with your house and with your presence and with the things that you have in store for us. Oh God, breathe your word upon the church again. Thirdly, thirdly, we gotta read, we gotta pray, and thirdly, We've got to practice being in his presence. Huh. You're in his presence right now. You'll be in his presence when you get in the car. You'll be in his presence when you have a fight with your wife. So practice Help me, Jesus. being in his presence. You'll be in his presence when you're with your co-workers tomorrow at lunch. You'll be in his presence when you're going back to school in a few days. You'll be in his presence when you stroll down the nursing home hallway to visit a loved one. You'll be in his presence in every area of your life when you walk out this door. Wherever you go, he is with you always. So practice being in his presence. Let's talk about his presence. David said in Psalm 16 and 11, In his presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. We've got the Godhead here. Now think about this. Think about what David says. He says, in thy presence, God, is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand is Jesus. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Well, let's think about who's at his right hand. You need a healer? In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand. You need deliverance in his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures evermore. You need forgiveness in his presence. There is fullness of joy. You need direction in his presence. There is fullness of joy. You need protection in his presence presence. Listen to me, folks. When is the last time you were really in His presence? 
I'm talking about you. I'm not talking about him being in your presence. I'm talking about you being in his presence. Oh, my God, my God. When is the last time you were in his presence? It's one thing for him to be in your presence, but it's another thing for you to walk into his presence. When he says, that's my boy. When he says, there's my son. Instead of him just waiting on you to come to him, when is the last time you jumped up into his lap and you said, Lord, I love you? A conquering Christian in a country in crises. The fourth thing we're going to have to do and the final thing we're going to have to do, not only we got to read the word, not only we have to pray, not only we're going to have to practice getting in his presence, we're going to have to proclaim his praises. Help the church of God, the Pentecostals, the people who are noted for their worship and praise. God, speak to some of these people. Get the Curtis shuffle in their feet. Get the, get the, get the praises of God back in your hand. We, we can't even get it in our mouth, much less our feet. I hear people all the time saying, God, 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 God's not. You're right, there is a bunch of emotionalism, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you think for a minute that, that you don't have to open your mouth to praise Him, you are wrong. You have got to open your mouth and cooperate with God and tell Him how much you love Him. The Bible says He inhabits the praises of his people. That word inhabits means he sits down and listens. He creates a cohabitation. He inhabits, he creates a place for you to come and habitat. When you praise him, it captures his attention and it is as if he is sitting down listening to you praise him. When is the last time you had the attention of the Father and you were praising Him? You didn't have to have a song. The problem in the Pentecostal church and the Baptist church and the Methodist church is we've hired people, and I love you, Josh. We've hired people to get us into the presence of God. And if we don't like what our hireling is singing, I wish I could play this. I play like Brother Lips are saying. Listen. Listen, listen, folks, listen. We expect this man to lead us in the presence of God in a God we have not been with all week long. We've not heard his word. We've not read his word. We've not lifted our voice. We've not opened our mouth to praise him. We've not been in his presence. And we expect to come to the house of God and him to sing in the sweet by and by and we'll all be happy over there. Help me, Jesus. You hear me today. This nation is in crises. And the church has got the remedy. But we got to quit being so stinking mean. We've got, a bit, we've got to quit being so stinking critical. Every one of us, regardless of what race we are, it's inbred in us. We can say it's not all we want to. But every one of us, whether we're black, red, yellow, or white, we have a respect for our people. And you hear this preacher today. Don't you let your ancestors come out of you. That spirit of hate. Because it's there. And it's not just in the white folk, it's in the black folk. It's in the red folk and it's in the yellow folk. We're in this thing together. We're going to heaven together. We're going to live with Jesus forever. And so we might as well on this side get happy with one another. This is the part of the message that I shared here right before I left. I've been working on this message ever since I left. And that was proclaiming his praises.
paying my bills one day right here. Paying my bills for you tell how many of you have bills? The rest of you are liars or you don't have electricity. Or you're a moocher and you're living with somebody. Everybody's got electricity, I think. You've got a gas bill if you've got a car. You've got to pay that thing at the pump. They're not going to give it to you for free. And those bills come due. They come due every 30 days. That house payment. There's one thing I don't miss in Cleveland. That's that house payment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't miss that a bit. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. Those bills were due every month. And if I didn't pay them, I would get notices. How do you know? Because I've been late before. I never got the discount at the utility place. Huh? Cleveland Utilities tries to get you to pay it early, and it's like three, two or three bucks. I said, man, I, I, got to, I can put $3 somewhere else. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen to me today. Those bills just kept coming. And if I didn't pay them, I would get a call. And if I still didn't pay them, now I don't know about this part, but if I still didn't pay them, they'd come shut it off. Are you still with me? Can I tell y'all, the church is late on its praise bill. We're late on our praise bill. Too many of us got too much food in our pantry. We got too many shoes in our closet and too many shirts hanging across the top of the closet. We, 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 we've got too many cars parked in our garage and we are living a life that has forgotten how to praise Him. We have forgotten what it's like to have to have somebody drop a bill of groceries off just for you to be able to make it. I can tell you I've been there before. I'm not proud of it, but I've been there before when I didn't know how we was going to make it, and somebody come by the house and say, the Lord told me to stop by today and to give you this. Are y'all still with me? Some of you might need to go back there. Maybe you'd start praising him a little bit. You've forgotten what it was like to be broke and not have enough money at the end of your month. But I'm telling you, God can take you back there because the Lord giveth and the Lord can take away. And it's still blessed be the name of the Lord. But I hear the sound of an abundance of rain coming, and it's the praises of God's people. We are late on our praise bill. When is the last time you woke up in the morning, Doug Murray said, Well, glory! It probably startled, if I was to do that, it probably startled my whole house. I'm preaching to Chris today. When's the last time we woke up and the first words out of our mouth was, Oh, I love you, Lord. I bless your holy name. Hallelujah at my house. It's leave me alone. Give me five more minutes. I've got an alarm set. Are y'all still with me? When's the last time you were in the praises of God and God spoke to you about your neighbor behind you in the grocery line and said, take care of that bill? Are y'all still with me? Huh? In Jackson, Mississippi, this is when God really spoke to me about this whole message. I was in a line. And a woman, I watched her. She used every credit card that she had. Declined. Declined. She didn't have anything else left. And she said, just put them back away. I stood to the counter and I said, I was, I was three people back. And at first I was mad. We was in the express lane. There's 49 registers open. There's 49 registers at the store, and only three are open. And the one where you're supposed to have 20 or less, there's people got 90 and 100. And I said, excuse me. I said, how much is it? That's irrelevant how much it was. It was more than I had in my wallet. So I used my debit card, and I paid that bill. I walked back to the back of the line where I was at. That woman walked outside. She walked out there and she said to me, 
I had five babies. I'm a spirit-filled Church of God in Christ woman. She said, you've got to be a Pentecostal. I said, what made you say that? The way you're dressed. I was dressed to kill that day. I looked like T.L. Lowry. And I, I had just come from a funeral, and she said, the Lord told me that if I'd stop in this store, she says, I live on the other side of Brandon, which is 30 miles away. She said, I just come out of the hospital where my husband was at, and he's dying of cancer. And she said, we don't have a dime to our name. And she said, the Holy Ghost, and she started hucking and bucking. She was a big praying mama too, I'm telling you. She had dreadlocks all the way to her waist. I'm telling you, she started spinning and hucking. She said, but the Lord! I'm telling you, people was watching us. Told me there would be a Pentecostal preacher that would help me when I got here. She said, so I was using everything I could to stall until the Lord spoke to you. Hallelujah. I said, ma'am, follow me to my office. I said, follow me. To, she said, where we go? I said, we go going to Brandon. That's where I'm from. Let's go. She followed me to my office. And before we got to the car, her car was parked three down from mine. I'm telling you, she was. And I said, you know what, mama? Well, glory. And I just spun like a helicopter. And I'm telling you, Pentecostal pandemonium broke out in that Walmart parking lot. This one old boy come out and said, my God, what's going on? I feel the glory over here. And the glory just started falling. There was a half a dozen of us praying in the Holy Ghost, bobbing like corks and flopping like fish. I'm telling you, all you got to do is obey God and proclaim His praises and get in His presence and watch my God do what only God can do. You're laid on your praise bill. When's the last time you opened your mouth and praised Him? You're laid on your praise bill. Hey, you hear me? If you continue to be laid, He'll cut your power off. Stand with me all over this house. Hey! Glory! Oh, it feels good to be home. I might find Brother Lipsy a church if I stay here much longer. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Listen! Listen! It's time for us to return to our roots. It's time for us to redig the old well. I'm speaking to my people. All is well with me. Trust me. Trust me. I'm coming quick. I'm returning quickly. Hear me, my church. Praise me while there is yet breath in your body on this side to praise me. Because I'm coming for a bride that is adorned and ready and that is worshiping and praising and magnifying my name. And I say to you today, go back to the old well and dig it again and watch my living water flow in this last day I'm going to pour out my spirit upon every living creature every race and every nation my coming is at hand don't be shook up just begin to look up I am your God and I'm sending my son soon to catch his bride away Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Here's what I want to do today. I'm going to be the first one. I'm going to be the first one because I've been late long enough. I've been late long enough on my praise. God's been good to me. God's been good to me. My grandfather never pastored a church where he drew a salary. And I've never pastored one that I didn't. Listen to me. God has been good to me. I think I have forgotten just how good he has been. He's been good to me. Look at this place. Look at this pastor that you have. This thing could have went up in flames. God's been good to me. When I come home and see him, I have to be honest, it's, it's, it's almost like a wife cheating on her husband when I see him in here. It really, that's what it feels like sometimes. But then I have to think, God has blessed this house. He's blessed this house. He didn't tell you, probably because I was here, He told you, you're doing good. You're breaking every record I ever set financially. You know what I do? Well, glory. I don't say, I can't believe that. I can't believe He's beating me. I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, church, listen to me. God's been good. I'm talking about me. You need to think about you. I'm talking about how good He's been to me. In 1999, when my baby was almost a year old, he healed Carly Hope. When that doctor told me she'd never walk again, or she'd never walk ever, today, she's one of the prettiest girls in the universe. And walking with no limp, told me her head would never heal. One ear was four inches in front of the other. Her head was lopsided. I'm telling you today, she's a beautiful, wonderfully, fearfully made and healed in the name of Jesus. And I have forgotten that. I forgot. In 2011, I almost, in 2001, I almost died. I had a nervous meltdown, breakdown. That's not fun to talk about. That man was there almost every day at the hospital, 70 miles away. I remember being in a fetal position in a state of depression. I remember being in a closet saying, I never want to preach this gospel again. Oh, God. But I also remember a pastor named Ray Evers came to visit me and took me in his arms and put me in his pickup truck and made me read the entire book of Romans all the way home out loud. We got to his house. And he said, I want you to read Ephesians. I said, I can't. He said, oh yeah, you're going to. And I started reading Ephesians. He said, I want you to read Philippians. By the end of the week, I'd read the entire New Testament out loud to Brother Evers, and I'm telling you, my body started healing instantaneously. Within a week, I was in the pulpit again. Within a year, I was here. You don't know all that story. God's been good to me. Now, just how good has God been to you? I just told you portions of my story. Some of you should be in jail or in a bar somewhere drinking it up. I've been late long enough, God. Forgive me, oh God, for not praising you like I should. Some of you shouldn't be here today had it not been for Jesus. Some of you shouldn't be here right now had it not been for Jesus. 
for the next two minutes, for the next two minutes, I'm requesting you to have a Pentecostal praise in your voice, in your feet, in your hands. These forces were committed and commissioned to praise Him. Do you remember? I'm going to do this. How many of you were an old alcoholic at one point in your life? Lift your hand all over this house. Keep them up. Don't be ashamed. Keep them up. That people need to know because there's some people in here struggling right now. Do you remember? Do you remember Russell Whaley? Do you remember how you were before he got a hold of you? How about your marriage? Has it ever been in trouble? And he sent you a rescue? How about your job? Have you ever had him provide you a job? Oh, I know now you've got your nice house and your nice car and your nice this and your nice that. But had it not been for God, where would you be today? Hey, how about you, mama or daddy? How about you, that spouse has walked out on you and left you with everything to handle? You remember what that was like? I'm ready to praise him now. How about you? Here's what I want us to do. I want us to look, everybody in this house, look back over your shoulder. Keep it there. When we come back, in just a minute, keep it back there. When we come back, we're going to open our mouth, we're going to open our voice. If you want to shout, whatever you want to do, but you've got to do something. I want everybody in this house, when we come back from looking back, when we start looking forward again, your bill's going to be paid. Praise bill's going to be paid. You're going to give him praise. Ready? One, two, three, do it now. somebody yeah come on balcony to the top of that balcony God's been good to you community. I want us to pray. We've already done it once. We're going to do it one more time. Our country's in crises. Our country's in crises. I'm looking out here today at some conquering Christians. Get back to His Word. Get back to His prayer closet. Get back in His presence and start proclaiming the praises of God with your mouth, giving thanks and praise unto our Lord. Before I turn it to your pastor, I want us all over this house, I want us to pray for the men in blue. I want us to pray for our black brothers and sisters. I want us to pray for our Hispanic brothers. I want us to pray for all of our people. I want us to pray in Minnesota for what's happened, Louisiana for what's happened. Texas for what has happened. 
I want us to pray for a reconciliation that can only come through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. God, send a move of your spirit in this church. Would you pray with me all over? Lay your hand on your person beside you all over this house and pray one for another. would say, Pastor, I need to listen to that message and I need to do it. If you believe you need to listen to that message, you need to do it. Slip your hand up and hold it up. Did the preacher preach to you? He preached to me. If the preacher preached to you, lift your hand up and say, God, help me. Everybody in the building that's got your hand lifted, say, God, help me to be a hearer and a doer of your word. Now you listen, if you'll just put these simple truths into action, and you'll read your Bible and pray every day, you will grow, grow, grow. It will make the difference in your life. It is the prescription that will heal what's ailing this nation. And before the nation will take it, it's got to be taken by the church. Does anybody believe what we're preaching today? Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow grow, grow. If I were you, I wouldn't miss Wednesday night for nothing in this world. I'm telling you, Lee Eric, then you're going to be ready to preach Wednesday night, right? I mean, you're going to, I mean, they need to be here, right? You're going to be ready to preach. Blake Morris, where you at? Where, where's Blake? You're going to be ready to preach Wednesday night, right? I mean, if they miss it, they're going to miss something you've been praying about, something you've been working on. Amen. Where's Jamie Avery? Where's Jamie? Jamie, if they miss Wednesday night, they're going to miss the word from God, right? These three men have been praying. I'm looking at them. I don't know if they've been fasting or not, but they've been praying, and and, and you, need to, you need to be here on Wednesday night. They're going to preach to you about the fact that how many got some things you need prayer to change? I got some things I need prayer to change. They're going to preach to you about prayer changing things. It changes people, perspective, and circumstance. Don't you miss it for anything in this world. Slip your hands to heaven one more time all over this building. God, I thank you for the Moody family. I thank you for the message of the preacher today. I pray blessings over Mississippi. 
I pray that Pastor Moody would walk under an open heaven, that he would be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, blessed when he goes in and blessed when he comes out, God. Father, I pray your blessings over every person in this house, God. I pray this week that we would become trees that are planted by rivers of living water that bring forth our fruit in our season. Our leaves shall not wither, and everything we do, it will prosper. Heal our bodies, bring peace to our marriage, and prosperity to our lives, and we'll be careful to give you thanks, praise, glory, and honor in all that we do. And all of God's people said, clap your hands one more time, shake somebody's hand, hug their neck, I'll see you Wednesday night in the house of the Lord. Sing them out of here.